Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. An empty lot surrounded by residential homes would be the spot for a gruesome discovery in February of 2009. A woman and her dog walking through the deserted lot would find a human bone on the ground and this would spark a massive excavation of the empty lot. Upon excavating the area, shallow graves and the bodies of 11 young women would be recovered. The case would be controversial from the start and the families of the young women whose lives were taken would feel disappointed and upset given the lack of media attention and the seemingly lack of interest by the police. On today's episode of the Serial Killer series, I'll be covering the story of the West Mesa Bone Collector. I hope you enjoy. Despite the discoveries of human remains in 2009, the story of how these young women came to be found in an empty lot that was going to be full of residential homes the year prior and the economic crash stopped these plans, actually began in 2003. One detective assigned to the missing persons cases, yes there was only one, found that women involved in the sex industry in Albuquerque were vanishing at an insane pace. The vast majority of these women came from loving families but had fallen victim to drugs and eventually began selling their bodies on the rough streets of Albuquerque. Reading up on some of their personal stories is both sad and tragic. Deaths in families and hard times which caused their hopes and dreams to crumble. This resulted in a life of drug use and prostitution. The way in which the women vanished off the streets is unclear. Many of the women hadn't been in contact with their families in months and so narrowing down an exact disappearance date is virtually impossible. The lifestyle was another challenge in getting more answers because sex workers are notoriously secretive with everything being underground for the most part. It would take over a full year for all of the remains to be paired to an identity and because of these factors, not to mention the time that the women had been in the ground, bones were all that remained. The cause of death of the women was not confirmed although homicide is virtually guaranteed given the method of body disposal and the sheer number of victims. The investigation doesn't seem to have progressed much over the years, at least publicly. This may be because New Mexico has a high violent crime rate and thus there are many cases being prioritised over others. There have been allegations that this case was put to the side given the victim profiles, along with allegations of police being involved with sex workers in the city. All of this looks bad on law enforcement and puts increasing pressure on the person tasked with finding the killer, or killers, years later. It also creates mistrust between the police and the local community, which is very bad, as mistrust prevents leads from being shared. Only two suspects have ever been named publicly, and one of them is dead and the other is serving a 90-year prison sentence. Both of these suspects are local, and the first suspect, the one serving the long prison sentence, is named Joseph Blair. His wife reported him to the police in the week following the first bone discovery. Blair had been stopped over 130 times between 1990 and 2009, always in areas frequented by prostitutes. He is serving his long sentence because of sexual assaults he committed and his DNA was even found on a deceased prostitute in 1985, although he wasn't charged with anything. Blair had also allegedly raped a child, a girl who was just 14. His life revolved around sex workers and all of his charges, both convictions and allegations, point to him being a likely killer of women. Blair also confessed to a cellmate that he knew the victims, but this isn't surprising given they frequented the same areas as the women involved in prostitution. What is surprising is a tag found by one of the victims, a tag for a tree from a plant nursery. It was traced back to a nursery that sends plants from California and Blair routinely purchased plants from nurseries that sold the Californian trees. Blair denies involvement in the crimes and currently serves his time. Thankfully, he won't be getting out of prison anytime soon. The deceased suspect is named Lorenzo Montoya, and he died in 2006. He too was violent and lived a life revolving around sex workers. He'd been seen trying to kill a prostitute and once even threatened to kill his girlfriend and bury her in lime. Yeah, this guy was somehow free and these examples of normal behaviour had him on the authorities' radar for the murders. Montoya had a history of these violent events going back many years and his violent side would inevitably end tragically with him committing a murder. Montoya had lured an escort to his trailer and killed her. 
Her pimp or boyfriend showed up to Montoya's trailer and ended up shooting and killing him as Montoya attempted to move the woman's body in his rental car. Police responded to shots fired and secured the crime scene. Given Montoya's long record of violence toward the women and the serious nature of the crime they had just committed, his trailer was searched. Pornographic magazines and sex tapes belonging to Montoya were found. Evidently, Montoya was a dangerous offender, but tying him to the West Mesa crime scene now that he's dead is surely going to be a tough one. Whether he is even involved is questionable, to say the least. There is much speculation with this case, and many have put forth the idea that this could not be the work of one killer. Many have theorised that a sex trafficking ring is involved, or that the crimes are the work of the cartel. Anything could be realistically possible. There are many unsolved cases which could be related to the case, and these may lead to more suspects being named in the future. However, at this time, nobody is in custody. A memorial to the women now sits at the site of the location where they were found, and press releases surface every once in a while to appeal for new information. The police are keeping tight-lipped about the tips that they receive, and so just how close to solving the case they are is not clear. But, big breaks can surface out of nowhere. Although it doesn't sound like a case where DNA will be the big break, one confession or one new tip could bring families some answers and some closure, and a killer or killers to justice. I personally think that this could be the work of more than one killer, but what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments below. This has been the Serial Killer Series episode on the West Mesa Bone Collector. As always, thank you for watching.